Next, next speaker, Dr. Kunjan Kumar from Archikar Medical College. Rare case of Wilms Demon. Good afternoon, my respected teachers and honored colleagues. Today I'll be discussing a case of a rare presentation of Wilms tumor. Our patient was Vahita Khatun, a 14-year-old girl from Kolkata who presented to us with blood in the urine for the past 18 months, lump in the left side of the abdomen for the past one year, and pain in the left side of abdomen also for the past one year. She was apparently asymptomatic until one and a half years ago when she had uh, hematuria, which was of sudden onset. Total, painless, intermittent, gross, associated with passage of clots. It was not associated with fever or pus in the urine. Uh, there were no other associated lower urinary tract symptoms, no episode of urinary retention, and no similar past history, no other episodes. The lump, which was present in the left side of abdomen for the past one year, was of slow onset, progressively enlarging, associated, associated with early satiety uh, as well as bloating sensation. And she gave history of respiratory discomfort, difficulty in breathing. She also gave history of loss of weight as well as loss of appetite. The pain in the left side was, again, of slow onset, dull aching, intermittent type, uh, increased in sitting posture and, uh, posture and on exertion, and was relieved on lying down. There was no history of uh, associated fever. There was no history of generalized body swelling or uh, facial, uh, facial puffiness. No history of metastatic symptoms such as hemoptysis, jaundice, seizures, or bone pain. There were no known comorbidities, no history of trauma. She had been hospitalized uh, two weeks before she presented to us for severe anemia for which three units of packed RBCs had been transfused. There was no past surgical history, no significant family history of any similar episodes. And uh, she attained Menaki at 13 years of age. Uh, her periods were irregular. Her bowel and sleep habits were unaltered. On examination, general examination, patient was of very thin build and poorly nourished and emaciated. Of, uh, uh, ECOG performance status was three. Her uh, vital signs were stable. Her uh, blood pressure was uh, 100 upon 60 millimeters of mercury, and she was pale. There were no other significant findings. On abdominal examination, on inspection, there was fullness seen in the left side of the abdomen. No other significant findings on inspection. On palpation, there was a large mass, approximately 20 by 15 centimeters, occupying the left uh, epigastrium, uh, lumbar region, hypochondrium, and uh, extending beyond the midline towards the right side. It was firm, with smooth surface, well-defined margins, except for the upper margin, which was dipping beneath the left costal margin, so could not be palpated. It was non-tender, bimanually palpable. The temperature over the swelling was not raised, and there was uh, the there was no other organomegaly or other lumps palpable. Systemic examination otherwise was normal. On blood investigations, on the significant findings were hemoglobin of 7.5 grams per deciliter. Other parameters were normal except for uh, liver function test where serum albumin was 2.5 and uh, lactate dehydrogenase was 650 international units per ml. On urine, on urine examinations, the urine culture was sterile, but routine examination and microscopy showed us RBC, plenty of RBCs with four or five pus cells per high power field. We proceeded, uh, because of uh, normal creatinine, we proceeded for uh, contrast and CT of the whole abdomen, which, as we can see here in the axial uh, uh, scans, axial images, shows us a large mass occupying the left side of abdomen, pushing all of the viscera, including small bowel loops and uh, stomach, towards the right side. Uh, it is heterogeneous, heterogeneously enhancing with necrotic, ne necrotic areas which can be seen within the lesion. Here, these are the coronal sections, the uh, MIP projections, which again show us, as we can see, that the great vessels, including aorta, are pushed slightly towards uh, the right side of abdomen. Uh, and uh, the, a large necrotic area seen in the upper pole, which is the upper part of the tumor, is extending until the left hemidiaphragm. And here we can see that the, um, the mass is rising from the upper and mid pole of the left kidney. The lower pole appears to be spared. The, we can, the, lower, uh, the parenchyma of the lower pole can be identified on the left side. On CT angiography, the right kidney appears to be normal. 
and a single renal artery was uh, sub is seen supplying the mass, which has been encased entirely by the tumor. The, on reporting, there was a 17 by 15 by 12 centimeter mass uh, seen in the left kidney, a middle and upper pole with necrotic areas encasing the left renal artery and vein. The left renal vein was distended with tumor thrombus and there was midline shift to the right because of mass effect. On HRC to thorax, there were no abnormal findings. Owing to the diagnostic dilemma inherent in a uh, girl uh, in her second decade of life with uh, app apparently malignant left renal mass, we went in for a image guided biopsy, ultrasound guided biopsy from the renal mass. The histopathology showed us polyvalent cells with vesicular nuclei, eosinophilic cytoplasm and distinct nucleoli. On immunohistochemistry, the tumor was CD56 and cytokeratin 22 positive and negative for smooth muscle antigen, cytokeratin 7, HMB45 and synaptophysin. A diagnosis of Wilms tumor was made. The, uh, we proceeded with uh, chemotherapy. The patient received four cycles of vincristin plus actinomycin D and cyclophosphamide followed by two cycles of etoposide plus iphosphamide. Following, during which the patient was followed up. Here are some images seen. Uh, 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 these images are after three cycles of chemotherapy. As we can see, the mass has started, has, uh, started shrinking in size. Uh, uh, pseudo capsule can be seen with uh, other ne uh, necrotic region. And again here, the, uh, we can see the normal renal parenchyma with medially uh, mass inside. Coronal section showing the same. And here I have put side by side two images. The image on the right is the pre-chemotherapy image where we can see the, the massive mass. On the left side, we can see how the tumor has shrunken. The patient underwent left radical nephrectomy with uh, IVC wall excision and repair. The post-operative course was uneventful. She was discharged on post-op day 7. <clears throat> the histopathology, the post-operative histopathology showed us uh, Wilms tumor with mixed stromal and epithelial elements and presence of significant necrosis in the tumor tissue. All margins were free. IVC was not involved. She, uh, following which she, has, she received 10.8 uh, uh, grays radiotherapy in uh, 24 divided doses. Here are some images following uh, in, uh, after six months of the surgery. As we can see, the, the small bowel loops are seen filling the left renal fossa. There is no evidence of recurrence. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any question from the floor? So, uh, we have followed up the patient for now for uh, uh, two visits after three months and six months of surgery uh, with uh, USG abdomen as well as CT in this case, uh, X-ray chest X-ray and uh, blood investigations including uh, complete blood count, hemoglobin basically and uh, urea creatinine uh, liver function tests. In one so, slide, showed that the yes. IBC was repaired. Yes, sir. Intraop, uh, I, I did not have the image. Sir, I do not have the image. Intraop, uh, th there was no, on imaging, there was no evidence of IVC infiltration, but intraop, it uh, appeared as if the tumor might be going through the uh, renal vein into the IVC wall. So to, uh, we did not take a chance and we put a uh, clamp and uh, uh, removed the. Yes, sir. The vein was injured while because in spite of the chemotherapy and all, there was severe desmoplastic reaction. Yes, sir. Due to the desmoplastic reaction when the tumor was handling, there was some Any injury. Any comment from Dr. Uday Chatterjee? the indication of biopsy and what was the approach? Is it done in uh, uh, thoracoabdominal route or any other? You have to take the help of the, because there is IVC thrombus. Initially, CT is that? No, sir. I, there was, on imaging, there was no IVC thrombus, only a renal vein thrombus. Uh, so, in this case, sir, because of the age of the patient, in the second decade, 14 years of age, uh, the most likely uh, renal malignancy in the second decade of life is considered to be renal cell carcinoma. So, it could be RCC, it could be Wilms tumor and the patient was a very poor surgical candidate as, as I showed. Uh, she was very emaciated, poorly nourished and EC, ECOG status was 3. So we could not have proceeded with that sort of, uh, with the image, that picture that we had at, the, at that moment uh, the, with a uh, midline mass, the mass effect, midline shift, etc. So 
we decided to go for the biopsy so to clarify our tissue diagnosis and new adjuvant chemotherapy what was the approach sir we can sir from a flank approach uh, imaging guided flank approach we went in we saw where the uh, solid tissue was and um, instead of uh, targeting a necrotic area and uh, took core biopsies from there uh, ensuring that the patient's coagulation profile was normal other options sir we can any there are any uh, like for graft it could be better uh, not to injure the ivc and other structure so prepare for any emergency after biopsy at any time there may be severe bleeding or or yes, some history because sorting history must be one yes sir Such a large tumor, I think uh, thoracoabdominal artery is the best one because we can just land out on the tumor, so there is less chance of injury to the other structure like that. So, by Chevron incision or subcostal, it is better go through the thoracoabdominal route. Sir, uh, just to tell me the reason, it was appearing inoperable at the uh, initiation because the mass, the gel condition was so poor. Huh. Yes. Yes. No, sir. So we would have to, uh, we would have to, no sir, yes sir, but because it, specifically in this case because of the age of the patient, if, sir, as per the Wilms tumor, in this case, we were suspecting a Wilms tumor and we were suspecting possibility of RCC. In Wil for Wilms tumor staging, uh, core biopsy, sir, 14-year-old uh, 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 patient, this… Sir, uh, neuroblastoma in this age yes. group is… Yes, sir. Uh, so on, I do not. I did not show the non-contrast images, but there were no intratumoral calcifications. The mass, though such a large mass, was not actually uh, going to uh, crossing over to the right side. So and and in this particular case, considering the age, there are possibility of wimps, possibility of neuroblastoma, neuroblastoma, and possibility in rare cases, particularly renal cell carcinoma. Yes. And considering the size and possible stage of the disease, it is far too advanced and it is extremely difficult to go for primary surgery. surgery. Yes. It will be, uh, there is every possibility of landing up in catastrophe. Yes. So when there is possibility of other, like Wim's tumor and uh, neuroblastoma, and because you have diagnosed Wim's tumor, that's why you have given this chemotherapy? And because of the chemotherapy, the whole size and everything has shrunk up. Yes, sir. And it here, a particular person has become a better, much better Surgical subject for candidate. anesthesia as well as for surgery. Yes, sir. So I will have to give that benefit every time. Yes. So it does not, if by Wim's tumor, suppose somebody says that by Wim's tumor, puncturing this ultrasound guided biopsy, there will be spillage. All right, let there be spillage. So how does it matter? It, it will become stage three and you are giving the chemotherapy. And the chemotherapy will delay it. Yes, sir. So all these together, you will firmly say, yes, I will go for ultrasound guided biopsy because this is again an indeterminate tumor. Yes, sir. Even if it is a renal cell carcinoma in adults, if the diagnosis is not very sure, one goes for yes. uh, puncture. Yes. So in this particular case, since the patient is hardly, I mean, 13, 14, 15 years age, yes. And there are other possibilities of neuroblastoma as well as Wim's tumor. And in such cases, when there is scope of chemotherapy, primary chemotherapy, which might reduce the size and it will Downstage make the patient for better subject for surgery, I will always go for that. Yes. So anybody against the, this 
pre-operative, pre-chemotherapy biopsy. So I accepted that pre-chemotherapy biopsy should be done. Okay, thank you. Thanks.